welcome to another episode of I Help Make That. Halloween is over, so for now we are back to regular reviews, though that might change come Christmas time. I'm your host, Kevin Higgins, joined with Scott Nicholson of Succession fame. Welcome, Scott. Hi, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Good to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. But before we talk about what today's subject is going to be, let's just get the anchor ad out of the way. So, have you ever wanted to create a podcast, but you don't know how? Well, try Anchor today, because it is the easiest podcasting platform to use. All you do is sign up for an account, then you can record and post on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those platforms. So, if you want to create your own podcast, try Anchor today. Now, you may know Scott, as I said before, from Succession. Succession is one of those shows everybody has seen but me. (laughs) This is the third time we are interviewing someone from a popular show I've never seen. But unlike with Larry Hankin, where we talked about the Breaking Bad movie, or Jarvis W. George, where we talked about The Wire, and I actually watched the entire first season, we're not going to be talking about Succession today. Instead, we are going to be talking about Scott's very first movie, at least according to his IMDb page. And what is that movie, Scott? Fresh. That's right. Fresh is a little scene, though very critically well-reviewed, urban thriller from the mid-90s about a kid named Fresh who is, well, a drug dealer. So in a way, it's kind of like a movie version of The Wire. However, he... Even though he starts off as a drug dealer, he starts noticing many killings and many other drug dealers and criminals are basically on his tail and he's trying to find out, like, who's killing everyone. And along the way, he sort of loses his innocence. So, tell me, Scott... Was that actually your first movie? No, I had worked on other movies, uh, mostly doing extra work before before that. But that was one of my first movies that I had lines and, uh, you know, an actual scene in or a couple scenes in. All right. Now, what was the audition process like for Fresh? Um, From what I remember... Um, I was an actual police officer, so uh, they were looking for cops to come in and, and play the role. And um, I, I had to audition. It was like a, a few lines, and uh, it was like inside his office. I actually didn't know about that, about you. So you were a cop before you were an actor? Yes. All right. So tell me more about your transition from being a cop to being an actor then. Um, well, you know, when I was a young boy, I always wanted to be in movies and, um, I grew up watching movies, watching all old, uh, old time movies, um, silent movies. And I was, I went to school for theater. I went to school for, um, I went to college for theater and my whole family were in the police department. So it was one of those things that, uh, my family wanted to, uh, Kind of tell me, you know, it's going to be difficult to be a, a, a cop. It's a, it's a, uh, it's going to be difficult being an actor. So maybe being a police officer might be better. But they were always supportive. And um, I went to school for theater uh, at Delphi University, and I got out of Delphi University and I did some uh, musical theater, uh, some theme park, work, theme park work up in uh, Canopy Lake Park, uh, up in New Hampshire, and then. I was called to be a police officer because I had taken the test when I was 16 years old. 
Um, I was always in the plays in high school. And when I, when I was just getting out of college, my father said, uh, listen, they're looking for police officers. Um, do you want to go on? I didn't really want to wait tables at the time. So I became a police officer um, as my day job. And in the meantime, then I was, uh, then I was acting in movies. All right. And when did you quit the force and acting became like a full-time job? Um, I actually retired from the police department after 20 years, a little over 20 years, um, in 2011. Okay. Uh, I been, I've been acting all through all those years I had been acting. So I always had my, uh, my feet in two places. I was a, a police officer and an actor. And a lot of times I played, most of the time I played cops in movies. So I think that's, that's originally how I, I, I got in, uh, to, to the audition for this audition for fresh was my agent at the time, uh, had sent me into the casting director and, um, Doug Abel brought me in. Uh, I met with Doug Abel, who was a casting director. Uh, I told him my background, and he, they were looking for cops to um, to actually real cops to, to to have a real feel for the movie. And um, then uh, he really liked they they liked what they saw, and they brought me in. They gave me the part. So, how long were you both a cop and an actor? Um, for my whole career, I, I was an actor first. I went to school for theater, and then I. Uh, graduated school. Uh, I did some musical theater. I did some musical theater like uh, at a theme park up in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. And then when I got done with that, I went into the police academy in uh, October of 1990. And I was working, I, I, I put off acting for a few years because it was hard to do both. But mm -hmm. in, in 1993, I started going to the actor's studio in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started uh, doing more um, background work. I worked in uh, on Law and Order a few times. Uh, I did background work on a show called Cagney and Lacey, which is really dating me. Um, and <clears throat> then I I also worked on a, a, a movie in 1990 prior to going on the police uh, department called um, The Cowboy Way, where I was also an extra. So I'd done a lot of extra work. Uh, and when my agent found out she, she knew I was a police officer. She introduced me to Doug Abel. I, was, I had a meeting with Doug Abel and um, they were looking for real cops to, to be in this movie fresh by Boaz. Okay. Now, when, uh, when you got the script for fresh, yeah. Like, were there any, was your experience as a police officer able to make you sort of relate to what was going on in the movie? Yes. I mean, I was a, I was a, I didn't, I wasn't a police officer in a neighborhood um, similar to the one that's, that's in fresh. I was a mid, I worked in Midtown. Uh, I worked in Times Square, but I was able to, to relate uh, as far as, you know, there was in the early nineties, there was heavy crime, uh, in the, in the city, uh, it was it was a lot worse. Uh, although now, you know, this this crime's coming back, but it was a lot worse back then. Um, and in the movie Fresh, I mean, you really get to see how drugs can destroy a neighborhood and um, really affect the children that are that are in those neighborhoods uh, where there's heavy crime and um, and drugs. So you know, I at the time being a police officer, I I had come across uh, drugs and crime, robberies. Uh, so I, I knew um, from that experience how to be a police officer and that uh, helped me with my role. Okay. And what was it like filming like in the, in, what was it like filming uh, the movie? Uh, I, I didn't work on it too long. It was, uh, I think, a day or two we worked on it, uh, my scene. Um, it was a great experience. It was actually funny because I, I went, I was in the police department, and I, I had just started a new unit where I was making movies for the police department. So I was an actor and a filmmaker, a videographer for the police department where we did, um, where we did uh, propaganda films and 
and training films for the police academy. Uh, so when I when I went to shoot on the show, um, my first scene, I the first take, I was I called cut, and the director uh, kind of yelled at me, kind of reprimanded me, and said, "You don't yell cut. You're not the director." But I I was so used to um, to doing that in in the police department when I was making movies, uh, making videos that it is just you know it was it was natural i didn't really like the way i was doing the scene and i yelled cut a couple of times so he, he reprimanded me for that which was kind of funny okay but in the screen in the scenes you were in like you had to tell this heavy like this these heavy things not well not you but like you were involved in scenes shall we say like where this child actor was had to act out some pretty heavy stuff was that like awkward for everybody no i mean the, the the main scene i was in was at the end of the movie um the movie is, is basically it's, it's almost a metaphor where he's playing he the young boy michael also known as fresh he plays um he actually has to he's a he's working for a drug dealer and he has to play the drug dealers against them uh mm -hmm. Themselves, uh, and he uses all the people, all the chess players, which is all the people he knew. He uses his sister, he uses his friend, uh, he uses the, the drug dealers against each other um, to set them up and really try to break free of of, of the life he was living and uh, and to help his sister. Um, so you know, the scene that I'm in is really the uh, he's setting up the he's really going in for the kill and he's about to put the king in, in, in a checkmate position, which is uh, played by Giancarlo Esposito. Uh, Giancarlo played uh, the main drug dealer, the smack drug dealer, the heroin drug dealer that he worked for. Mm -hmm. And in this scene, he's he's basically, uh, my character is finding the, the planted drugs and gun uh, that he used to set uh, Giancarlo Esposito's character up. Okay. So, you know, that was, uh, so then, all, all right, but so you didn't really notice any, like, awkwardness or anything? No, I didn't find it awkward. I mean, I think the acting was, uh, the, the, the scene I was in was a very, um, it was more of an interior scene. It wasn't, it wasn't violent in any way. I, right. felt, I felt the, uh, you know, the actor, Sean, uh, he was young, young actor, uh, very talented. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the scene is awkward in the fact that uh, I think he's afraid. The character uh, of Fresh is, is, is fearful that is he doing the right thing? And is he going to, is his, or all of his moves and and um, motions to, to save his sister and to save himself going to all come to a head and, and the way he wants it to? And so, I mean, it, it was slightly awkward. Uh, seeing him and his his uh portrayal of the, of the young boy uh and, and and in the situation but not so much awkward in in the the acting of it right no he did a fantastic job and so did john carlo actually um how was it like working with john carlo great uh he was he was a great guy um i didn't i didn't really have a lot of uh a lot of play with him. Uh, it was more us coming into the scene and uh, me finding the drugs and the gun under the bed. But uh, he was a nice guy, very professional. Mm -hmm. I remember. I mean, it was a long time ago now. So uh, I think we shot that back in 93. It came out in 94. Mm -hmm. It might have been 94 we shot it, but I think it was 93 we shot it. It came out in 94. Um, yeah, but it was it was great to work on it. And, and um uh, the director was great. Uh, it was cinematography was at Hollander, I believe. He, was, he did a great job, and yeah, yeah. So then, you know, the after the movie was done, and it came out in '94. What was it like with it being your very first movie? Like, how did that make you feel at the time? Yeah, well, well, I was. It made me feel great um, at the time. Like I said, I was I was starting to go to the actor studio uh, when I had some days off, um, 
And I never, I had been on movie sets, like I said, but um, I never really had dialogue so much. Uh, mm-hmm. So had, being able to be in that scene, uh, it was a it was a pivotal scene in the movie and it, it gave me a really good feeling. And I felt that, you know, hey, I could do this. And if I, if I keep going with it, if I can, you know, do both jobs right now, um, then my whole my whole dream was just to be able to act uh, and do that as my sole career, which is what I'm doing now. Mm-hmm. So, um, it, it, in a way, in a way, and and it wasn't planned. I didn't plan this, but looking at the movie, I just recently watched it again. In a way, I, I've I've done that in my career where I, I I've used everybody. You know, I, I was able to use people. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I've worked with and in my life, or, you know, just that I had a, ba- a, a background in acting, I had a background in, in, in um, being a police officer and that worked together. So I was able to use those things to help propel my career. You know, my, what I did in my life and my, in my, in my living also helped in my, um, in my dream, my dream job, which is acting. Yeah. That, that is really cool. And, I, I will say this, um, you know, it is a great movie. It is said it kind of flew under the radar with audiences. Yeah. Um, but uh, I guess what I want wonder is like, you know, at that time, you know, even though it got all these great reviews and, you know, uh, like audiences hadn't, weren't really watching like, did that, how did that feel knowing that no one was really talking about it at the time? Um, how did that feel? I don't really remember it specifically. Nobody, t- it wasn't a big, a big, um, uh, money making movie, I don't believe. Um, yeah. but it, it was, it was being, uh, there was some critical acclaim for it. Uh, well, well, yeah, I remember is that it wasn't your typical. It wasn't your typical, um, you know, movie of uh, a young kid growing up in the inner city, growing up in a, in a, uh, in, a, in a neighborhood that there was crime and 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 drugs, and it it took a different take, and it really showed uh, the human side mm-hmm. of uh, the people that lived in the in those in, in that neighborhood, and um, and the music wasn't your typical. Uh, uh, rap music or uh it, i i love the i love the orchestra the the music pieces that they chose mm-hmm. uh but as far as as far as um the acclaim i think for what it was at the time it was it was a breakthrough movie it was it was really a breakthrough movie just getting it was different than a movie like uh, juice or um you know where they i i think it showed the people actually as they as they were as they live in the neighborhood and i that's what i loved about it it was it was it was great that way yeah and you know not again not uh and honestly you know i was talking about this with the wire but in many ways as i was mentioning earlier it kind of is like a movie version of that wire or at least like if they made a movie version of michael b jordan's story like you know, for a, for a character as a kid, this character is actually complex in many ways because, like, as you said, he's sort of trying to be this chess master, put like, pulling all these, like, pitting all these, like, drug dealers and criminals against each other. But there is still sort of an underlying surface, you know, as we mentioned before, that he doesn't, know all the time entirely what he's doing in many ways he's still just a kid and you know spoiler alert uh at the end like when everything seems to have come together he actually cries yeah which i see as sort of a metaphor as like a loss of innocence right yeah Yeah. up until that point that's really i think the last scene the last shot in the movie is when he really cries and he lets it all go and it's in front of his father, which is Samuel L. Jackson, mm-hmm. who plays the part um, masterfully. Um, yeah, it's it's 
it's almost like he's he's playing all the characters. He's playing all the the, the pawns, as his father says. You have to use all the pawns when he's mm-hmm. teaching about playing chess. And he uses all the pawns, all the people he knows, even the ones he loves, to get to his ultimate uh, – attain his ultimate goal, which is to, to get out of this situation where he's involved in this, uh, this terrible drug scene where his, his young girlfriend that he loves, she's, she's shot on the street and uh, he sees that. And it's, it's almost a, re, it's a revenge film uh, mm-hmm. in many ways, but uh, it's not something that he does joyfully. It's right. It's a, it's a, uh, a means to an end, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's very much a revenge film, an urban film, and a coming of age story. Right. If you will. Yeah. So any everyone, if you have never heard of Fresh before, it is on Paramount Plus. So if you want to see it there, that's where you can see it. And I think um, this is a perfect place to end. Okay, great. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for coming on, Scott. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And um, is there anything you'd like to promote? Uh, Go and see Succession. Watch Succession, HBO Max, uh, on HBO. And uh, it's coming out in the early spring, I believe. I think they just came out with a new trailer. So uh, go and watch it. I think you're going to like it. All right. Well, that was I Help Make That. And I'll see you all later.